And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for a time when we can gather together, be present in, in your house, and, and just be a part of what you're doing in our lives together. It's such a blessing to get to do that. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And so right now, I just ask that you would help us just listen in, whatever it is you want to say to us. Guide us in these next moments as we open your word together and have what we've come to affectionately call and know, be known as a divine appointment with the creator of the universe. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. I, I have come to see in the last year and a half, couple of years, the, the extreme importance of understanding. I don't know if any of you over the last couple of years have had a word, like, like one word that's just been your word of the day. It almost sounds like something that uh, uh, Mr. Rogers, is it Mr. Yeah. Sounds like something that somebody like that would do. What's your word? Here's the word of the day, kids. I've had a word for the last year and a half. Have, any, have you had a word? Any, does anybody, like any one person, just shout out a word? God's put a word on your heart for like a last year or something? Fruit, fruits of the Spirit? That's kind of like Sarah's. I asked Sarah what her word was, and she said, much shorter sermons is what her words are. <laughs> Number one, that's three words, but yeah, fruit, fruit of the Spirit. All right, hold on a second, hold on a second. I'm getting this disgruntled look, and she's looking over at my dad like, I never said that. That's the first time I've ever uttered that. That just came to me. That just happened. That was pretty cool. Sarah never said that. I just made it up to be funny. All right, so what were the words again? We got fruit, peace, peace right. disciple, what? Faith, what? Patience. All we need is a little patience. Forgiveness. Joy. Humbleness. Love. Hope. Faith. Faith. Courteous. The, the word of the week for soccer camp will be courteous. <laughs> what was it? Pray? Pray. I, I hope what, what you find, if, if, if God puts a word on your heart, if you, I, I've come to believe that if you really listen to what that word is, God might be really wanting to speak something of, of great value and truth to guide our lives. For me, almost two years ago, for whatever reason, this one word just could not leave me. Every time I opened the Bible, it just was there. And it's this word, understanding. Understanding. It has been my challenge. It has been my prayer, my challenge word and my prayer word for nearly two years. Understanding is to hear and to know what somebody means. To, to truly understand them. It's, it is it, it really can't happen, but it is empathy for or feelings for the need of another person. To truly look at them and have understanding for where they're coming from. It's, it's trying to put ourselves in another situation. And I found to truly have understanding for another person, it just automatically happens. It's empathy. It's compassion that I feel like I'm walking in the shoes that you're walking in. I, I believe personally that understanding and the way that we're going to look at it only comes from spiritual growth. It only really comes from fruit of the Holy Spirit. It only really comes through a, a maturing and growing relationship with Jesus Christ. The word itself, I, I don't know, I've, I didn't do the, uh, a word study to look at how many times throughout the Gospels it's used, but I believe it's one of the characteristics or the key, a key kind of word that describes Jesus and his ministry. How many times did it say things like, Jesus looked upon the crowds and he saw them and he had compassion on them as those like sheep without a shepherd. I mean, what really are they describing there is a person who looked at the crowds of people and he had understanding and compassion for where they were. Understanding comes from growth in Christ. It comes from spiritual maturity. It comes from being controlled by the Holy Spirit. The more fruit we have of the Holy Spirit, the more we grow in wisdom and in understanding. In Proverbs, you're going to see those together. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. The opposite of understanding then is misunderstanding. It's, and, and I fear that relational growth is stopped by misunderstanding. R relational growth is stopped by misunderstanding. 
Common problems and misunderstanding, I can relate to these all the time. Number one, they can relate from the speaker. Lack of clarity. The reason I write slow down on my notes all the time. It was just too fast. It was too much information. Is I just couldn't keep up and I couldn't comprehend and I, and I totally didn't get what you were saying. So it could come from the speaker. It could come from the listener. It, may, it doesn't matter how slow I talk, how fast I talk. It doesn't matter any of those things if the listener is sitting here in a whole other world, in another whole world. It, it doesn't matter. The listener might be distracted. The listener might have ill feelings towards the speaker. The, the listener might be dealing with anger and bitterness and all these sorts of things. And it doesn't matter if the, list, the, the speaker stands here and says, God is good, you're going to say, that guy's a, a dope. I don't know what he's talking about. So, so there's misunderstanding that can occur. And one of the most dangerous areas is when we then speak without understanding. What did the speaker say? Don't have a clue. But then we just start speaking whatever we think was heard. When we speak without understanding and that we don't understand what was really going on or we don't understand the situation, we don't have the full information before us, and we just speak. And we start, in Jesus' day, texting and tweeting and posting stuff on Facebook all the time because we've heard something and we think we know the truth. There's a, there's a Greek term for that. It's called flying off the handle. And a lot of damage is done and relational growth is stopped with misunderstandings. Misunderstandings happen. They happen all the time. But we need to be able to communicate and work through them because they, when they linger, misunderstanding, I believe, will stop our growth with God and it'll stop our growth with other people. And what is the two key core foundational truths from Jesus' perspective about what does it mean to be a Christian today, which is love God, grow in relationship with God and my relationship with Jesus Christ, and grow in love and my relationship with other people. But we cannot do that if we're just struggling with all sorts of misunderstandings. Understanding then, for me, what I have found to be true in the last couple of years, understanding is key to growth and faith and relationships. And Proverbs, the book of wisdom that we're studying through June and July this, this summer, highlights this more than any other book in, in the Bible. I, I didn't have any numbers to this. I know you guys love this so much, so get your pencils and paper or your tablets or whatever you're using. Prepare to be shocked. You love this stuff more than I do. You know how many times the word understanding is used in the Bible? Let's just start there. I read the whole thing last week and counted. The word understand, now this is in the ESV translation of the Bible. 257 times in the Bible, the word understanding is used. That's, that's pretty good. 181 times of that occur in the Old Testament, 76 occur in that, of that in the New Testament. Guess which book the word understanding occurs in more than any other book in the whole entire Bible. Yes. 43 times the word understanding is used in Proverbs. 43 times out of 100, or 181 in the Old Testament, 76, 257 total, 43 times the word understanding is used. The next highest book in the Bible to use the word understanding was used at 22 times. Do you know what book that is? Huh? I don't, I don't know how you'd even know. I wouldn't have any idea. Just, it's Daniel. Daniel. So 43 is the highest. 22 is the next highest. And the rest of Scripture will have two or three in this book, four or five in this one, six or seven, maybe 10 was the next highest number. 43 times the word understanding is used in Proverbs. The next highest in all of Scripture is 22 in the book of Daniel. We can all now sleep tonight knowing that. Correct? Why is that important? I think that's extremely important because then this book must have something to say to me, a book of wisdom about the importance of understanding. So now we pick up at Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 8, we will read. Which says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, 
Yes, if you call out for insight and you raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Now, just in the first couple of verses here, he says, he uses this imagery. I want you to, my son, if you're writing to my son, I want you to incline your heart towards understanding. I want you to, verse 3, raise your voice for understanding. Incline your heart to understanding. Raise your voice to understanding. Proverbs really, partly I believe, is a call for us to passionately pursue understanding. Raise your voice for understanding. Incline your heart to understanding. Remember part of Proverbs, according to that Billy Graham kind of understanding, is he would read Proverbs daily to work on his relationship with other people. So if I'm trying to get in right relationship with God, that was the Psalms for Billy Graham. That was his understanding of the gospel truth and what Jesus has done for him. And if I'm trying to get in right relationship and and work on relationships with other people, he said, Proverbs is a place I would go to, which is interesting that Proverbs seems to be a call for us to passionately pursue understanding. Why would that be so important in my dealings with other people? Because I constantly don't understand what people do. Partly that's because we live in this bubble of a world that thinks that we're like the Messiah. I mean, granted, Jesus is the Messiah, but next to him is is us. We all think that. And so Proverbs says, I want you to passionately pursue understanding understanding and help guide you in relationships with other people around you. Now, there are, as I said, 43 of these. I just highlighted a handful that I think are interesting for us to hear. So here's, uh, we're in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 13. I just want to read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if I counted that right. So there's eight. Here we go. Proverbs 3, 13. It says, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. Solomon in writing Proverbs says, you are blessed if you get wisdom and if you get understanding. Remember how this whole thing started with Solomon and, and, and God says to Solomon, I, whatever you want, what is it? And I'll give you. What did Solomon want? Wisdom. He says, you are blessed if you find wisdom and if you get understanding. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 13. Keeping in mind, again, Proverbs is a call for us to passionately pursue understanding. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 13. I just love the imagery of some of these that we're about to read. On the lips of him who has understanding, wisdom is found. Have you ever been with somebody or have you, well, it's easier to talk about other people. Have you ever been with somebody who flew off the handle? They're not wit wise. They're stupid, and you look ridiculous. And so he says, on the lips of him who has understanding, wisdom is found. I mean, what does that look like? When something happens to you and you get a little burr up your backside, and now you just fly off the handle, you look stupid. For him, he's saying, on the lips of him who has understanding, wisdom is found. So something happens to you, and you're able through the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and peace and patience and kindness, being led by God, being led by the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us to pull back and to say, okay, right now I want to fly off the handle. Actually, I want to break the handle and break it over your head. But help me, help me in this. Help me understand where you're coming from. And on the lips of that person who has understanding, Proverbs says, wisdom is found. Wisdom is found. What happens when you fly off the handle? I mean, at some point, if you're humble enough, what do you have to do? You got to apologize. You got to go walk back through that mess. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. Similar imagery to what we were just looking at. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Have you ever seen anyone exalt folly? (laughs) 
Again, we should, I should have given you the heads up on this. This is not one of these days where you're elbowing your, your neighbor. Uh, are you listening to this? Because it's all about you. Um, this, is, this is owning. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. Again, what is the teaching for us to passionately pursue understanding? When you fly off the handle, you have no understanding. You can't work with that person. You can't talk to that person. You're not willing to listen to anything. You're this close to being admitted to the ER because you're about to burst every blood vessel in your head and your brain. And you have no understanding. You cannot work with that person at all. Remember last week we looked at what is the number one thing that a coach would look for in a player? My opinion. What am I looking for? I want you to be coachable. If, if LeBron James signed up to play on my son's t-ball team, I would have to say, you, I'm going to be honest with you, you would dominate. But you're not coachable, and I don't want you. You have no understanding. You have no willingness to listen to anyone, and I can't work with you. Have you ever tried to work with anyone who just doesn't want to listen to anything? We need to also add in this, because we keep saying them, them, them. Have we ever been that person? <laughs> have you ever flown off the handle? Have I ever flown off the handle? Have I ever, you know, got mad at my wife playing soccer or something like that? I'm not answering that question. Uh, Proverbs 14.33. Proverbs 14.23. Wisdom rests in the heart of a man of understanding, but it makes itself known even in the midst of fools. There's something so powerful about wisdom and understanding that even in the midst of those who like to exalt their folly, there is a person where we might actually be able to go to to find wisdom and truth. But notice again just the imagery. Wisdom rests in the heart of a man, of a person of understanding. Proverbs 16, verse 16. Proverbs 16 verse 16. We don't use imagery or think about things like this a lot, especially in a world that pursues so much material kinds of possessions and things. But here is an example of, don't worry about pursuing material things, pursue wisdom, pursue understanding. Proverbs 16, 16 says, how much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. So here's the scenario. You're brought in Okay, this is what I got. Gold, silver, or wisdom and understanding. Most of us are probably, I'm going to go with the gold and the silver. I'll buy wisdom and understanding later. He says it is actually better to choose these two. Why do you think that would even be true? Even just from a practical standpoint, if I give you wisdom and gold and you are a person who exalts folly, how much wisdom and gold are you going to have in the next couple of years? If I give you wisdom and understanding, potentially you add this because you're really smart and you understand how to work with people. And you might have this. Have you ever read those stories or listened to uh, uh, news stories of here's this famous athlete made millions and millions of dollars and then X amount of years later, they've got nothing. I know the first one you're all thinking about, the last one I saw was not an athlete, but MC Hammer. I, mean, I watched the story of MC Hammer had all this and then it's gone. You had, you had gold and silver and it's gone. Maybe you lacked wisdom and understanding and you were just stupid. But you had your moment. So uh, Proverbs 17, verse 10. Proverbs 17, verse 10. Th this is a really, really interesting imagery here. Proverbs 17, verse 10. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. I, I vote we all get that as a back tattoo not for next week. Think about what that's saying. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. Have you ever tried to talk with somebody rationally who's irrational? And you try to speak truth or wisdom, or has, have, you been, have we been irrational when somebody tried to speak truth into us, and we don't want to listen to nothing, because I know everything. He says, 
a person who has understanding, a rebuke goes deeper into that person than if you sat there and just punched them with all your words and all your truth. Have you ever just for hours tried to get somebody to understand where you're coming from and you almost felt like uh, I'm a boxer who just finished a fight and I got nowhere except now it's just uglier. Do, Do you see why this potentially is so important in our lives? I don't want to be a person who's just sitting and beating people up, trying to get them to understand where I'm coming from. And at the end, we're both exhausted and tired and just hate each other. Vice versa, I don't want to be a person who doesn't listen to anyone and understand where they're coming from and might actually have something to learn from somebody I even don't like or just be a person who I just got to be punched at all the time and then I walk away thinking I'm better and right. There is such wisdom in this. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. Proverbs 17, verse 27. Two, uh, two more here. 17, verse 27. I like the imagery, the way the ESV r- words this. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. That's a decent, at least, T-shirt. I've got a cool spirit. Yeah, yeah. What, what is it about that person? I don't know. I gotta t- they, have, they just have a cool spirit. A, whoever restrains their words has knowledge. Then the opposite would be to just speak whatever you want to speak. The minute you think it and being all mad and out of anger is one who exalts folly and has no knowledge. is a fool. He who has a cool spirit, something cool about their demeanor. There's something calm about their presence. There's something inviting about that person. There's something that's not agitated and angry and upset. There's something about this person that could be described as a cool spirit. They are a person of understanding. You can talk to them. How about this as an idea with this? We've not, we've thought about, have you know anybody that's like this? Do you know yourself like this? Do you, do you know anyone in your life? And and this is not a time to give me a 20 minute testimony about it, but do you know anyone in your life that you would describe as yeah, I never said it like that, but they, I know this person in my life, they have such a cool spirit about them. And when I'm faced with a difficult situation, I often go to them. I would seek their advice or their counsel or just have them listen. Do you know anybody like that? Do you want to be that person that someday when somebody goes through a problem and they say, you know, I'm going to call up so-and-so because they have such a cool spirit and I can't talk to anyone because they're so irrational. And it might be that my own family, my friends, the people closest to me, they're horrible because every time I go to them with something, they're all over the place. But I got this person that I know and they have such a cool spirit about them that they're a person of understanding. And here's the last one that at least where this journey for two years has, has driven me. Uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. I, I believe with all my heart that what this world needs are people with a cool spirit and an understanding that only comes from a deep, committed relationship with Jesus Christ, being led and fed by and moved by the Holy Spirit, and that As we look around the world and even within the walls of these church every single Sunday, the purposes of our hearts, the things that are going on in our lives are like deep, sometimes very murky waters. And we need a person of understanding to help draw out what's really going on. So much of life is lived on such a surface level. If I looked at any of our Facebook pages today, we look amazing. We look awesome. Everything's going great. But in the heart of, and you need to hear this, especially for those who think I'm, like I read something in your emails this week and I'm only talking about you. There is not a person in this room. There is not a person in this room. If it's you and you think it's just you, you are wrong. You are not the only one who is going through difficulty 
Life might be very murky. Life might be confusing. Life might be difficult. You might be struggling with anger. You might be struggling with addiction. You might be struggling with unforgiveness. You might be struggling with just uncertainty of the future, things that are unknown. You might be struggling with fear and anxieties and the purposes of your heart are like deep waters. And we live in a world that wants us to remain on the surface, shallow level, to never go deep. And sometimes we're afraid to go deep because we don't want to go there and I don't want you to know that what you see here is not what's really going on inside. And I'm scared out of my mind that somebody's gonna find out that I'm actually a fake and a fraud. And those are very deep waters. And I would not entrust those waters to just any fool. I would seek out and I would search and I would wait for someone that God might bring into my life. And first and foremost, if that's you and you don't have a physical person in your life around you, you have a Savior that would talk to you anytime you want to talk to you, that you want to talk to him. Remember a few weeks ago I said that the pastor, that, uh, the guy asked the pastor, Pastor, would you pray that God would speak to me? And the pastor said, no. No. Because I know God is wanting to speak to you all the time. He is a good father. I will pray that you listen. And that is so true. It would be like you coming to one of my, one of my kids and coming to you and say, hey, would you pray that my dad would speak to me? I mean, actually, probably some of you have had the opposite. That my kids are saying, would, could you help my dad stop talking? Because you think it's bad to listen to him for 30 minutes? Try living, in, try living with him. It's horrible. Sermons are like this all the time. It's, can you imagine one of my kids coming to you and saying, would you please pray that my dad would talk to me? You would say, no, I know your dad. He's speaking all the time. I'll pray that you listen. The purposes of a man and a woman's heart are like deep waters. And there is a lot going on in every single one of our hearts here today. And what my prayer has been for my life and my role as pastor and my prayer is for us as a church, as a, as a, as a body of believers, is that we would become a group of people who have such a cool spirit that we would have something so amazing to offer to this world, not because of us and who we are. If you think you're amazing, then you're a problem. But because of something that's indwelling inside of us that the community around goes, I don't know anything about necessarily the message or the truth, or I can't quite wrap my head around what CBC is saying over there, but every person I meet from that church has such a cool spirit. And I would go to them if I had a problem. And I would go to one of their members if I had a problem. It's not prophetic, it's not, any, but I can tell you, I hear that all the time. And it warms my heart to no end to hear how many people have interacted with some of you in this community and have said, I met so-and-so and they're from your church wow, I think God sent them to my life. Wow. And it's okay to let that linger and let God do what God's doing. Believe it or not, I don't try to seal the deal at that moment and say, well, let's, you get, let's get you in the doors. Let's get you start tithing and start giving money to the church. Praise God, we love Jesus, but we want your money. You know, just to let that be and to let God do what God's doing and let God to use you. If you have an understanding heart, and be known in the community as a cool spirit and a person of understanding, it'll be amazing what can happen when you truly just sit with somebody and listen with no other agendas, with nothing for yourself, with no accolades. If you have a moment with somebody and you walk away and you think, and it's natural to think this at times to say, well, man, they didn't even say thank you. I didn't even want to, I didn't say nothing, they didn't write a card, they didn't give me like a, a gift card to Starbucks or something, they didn't do nothing for me. I'm a little upset. In your flesh, that's your flesh battling, but call that out and aware that that's pride and that's sin and that's arrogance. And I want to be led more by God's spirit and I would rather be unknown and go under the surface of all these things and when people know they can find me and, and that, praise God, then truly I could maybe help somebody come to know Jesus better and to know and to see and to listen what God's doing in their lives. Because when you experience deep 
deep understanding and love from another person or the God, the author and perfecter of our faith, that's where healing starts to occur. That's where healing begins. That's where healing can end. When you sit with somebody who has deep understanding, who has deep love and appreciation, and that is being led by and leading you towards truth, that is where healing begins. So for me, and I'm just going to hit these real quick, that understanding brings a number of things. Compassion. If I am a person of understanding and a a cool spirit, if I'm being led by God's spirit, if the fruit of the spirit is, is growing within me, understanding will bring compassion. If you lack compassion in your life, that's okay to own it and to say, I just don't have compassion. It's easy to know. When you walk into a room and you see a bunch of people that are different than you, what do you immediately do? For me, I can't hide it. My veins start popping out in my head and my jaw gets like this. Man, you're, you're, you're irritated. You're not compassionate. That's okay. It's okay. I'm still growing. I'm st- I got to work on that. So understanding, though, will bring compassion for people. It's why Jesus stood on the hillsides and he would see the crowds of people and he'd say, look at these people. They're they're, they're helpless. They have need. Now, he could have looked at an individual people and say, I do like that one, but boy, that one's annoying. That one's really, God, I don't know what you were thinking there. Uh, I don't like this. So for like, so like these 10 over here and like those two there and that one, I love them. Not all of them, just those 14 I named. That's not what Jesus did. He stood on the crowds and he saw the crowds of annoying kinds of people. If you don't think you're annoying, uh, please come to my office after church and borrow John Ortberg's book called uh, Everybody's Normal Until You Get to Know Them. And by everybody, that's you too. We're all weird. We're all annoying. So Jesus looked at all the weird, annoying people and he said, I have compassion on these people and I love them. Understanding will bring compassion. Here's a big thing that I have found in the last couple of years that is so crucial. If you are struggling here this morning with areas of unforgiveness, understanding will bring forgiveness. Now, it doesn't happen like this. Have understanding. This is a Jedi mind trick. Have understanding, forgive, go. It doesn't work that way. Understanding will bring forgiveness forgiveness. Why? Because if you can truly put yourself in the shoes of another person and begin to understand why they did what they did, why they said what they said, maybe find out that it really had nothing to do with you in the first place. They're just an angry, mean person because of junk that's happened in their life and somehow you happened across their path and it wrecked into you. It could be because they're mean and they have a something against you, and that's, that happens. But if I walk in their shoes a little bit, I might understand why they said what they said, why they did. I'll never appreciate it, never want it. I don't want it to happen again, but I, I'm understanding a little bit better of where you were coming from. Uh, there was a story I heard years ago that it kind of fits with this, that uh, uh, there was a man who was who was traveling on a, a bus or something, and I forget, he had three or four kids and little kids, and they were just unruly and hitting stuff and doing all sorts of stuff, and the passengers were just irritated and agitated, and the man sat there and did nothing. And finally, one of the braver souls, a person that maybe didn't lack such a cool spirit, went up and kind of scolded the guy and said, can't you control your own kids? And the man kind of looked up and said, I'm, I'm really sorry. They... They probably don't know how to act. We just left from meeting with the funeral home. Their mom had died. Now, I'm a pastor, so I try to like seal the deal with something real dramatic, I know, but sometimes there might be something going on in somebody else's life. And if I'm really, really honest, because I live in a selfish kind of world, I'd have to say, I don't really care what's going on with them. Don't they know what's going on with me? But a person of understanding might step back and say, maybe there's something going on here that I don't know about. Maybe there's something happening in their life, and right now they don't need another person to come and just heap insult and abuse upon them. Maybe they need a cool spirit who can walk in the room and just say, could I help? Could I be here? Could I listen? Understanding will bring compassion and it will bring forgiveness and it will then bring almost thirdly there in order, it will bring transformation. 
Understanding will help to transform my perspective, my understanding of what's going on. It'll bring transformation of relationships. To truly understand who I am and, and where I stand in God's plans. The person that walks in and says, hey, I'm good, I'm fine, everything's good. I've never broken one of God's laws, I've never done anything wrong. We're good, me and God are tight. Doesn't fully have an understanding and appreciation of where we stand before the author and perfecter of our lives. Understanding will bring transformation in our lives. And then as a fourth result of all those things, understanding will bring health in relationships, in the relationships that matter, which is God and others. I didn't write this one correctly at the end, but uh, understanding brings, helps us listen. That, sorry, that was a mistake on that one. But understanding will bring better listening ears. Understanding will help us listen. And you are not, we are not going to get to a place of health and relationships, of transformation, of forgiveness and compassion if we do not listen. So they build from there and they build from compassion, forgiveness, transformation, health and relationships, but you can't do any of them if you refuse to listen. Why did the psalm say, be still and know that I am God. Because I want you to stop from the surface level. I want you to stop from the busyness. I want you to stop from the distraction. And I want you to just listen. And you might be shocked with what you find out about yourself, ourselves, and what we find out about another person that maybe I have judged wrongly for so long. Here, here's the challenge for the week. Try it sometime. Try it. Practice understanding both after a difficult conversation and before one. Try it. This is your homework assignment, class. Write up a, uh, a two to three page report on it, double space, 12 foot, no, <laughs> not happening. Try it, seriously, seriously try it. If you've had a difficult conversation in the past, has anybody ever had, has anybody not ever had a difficult conversation? Let's start. <laughs> If you've had a difficult conversation and you're still angry about it and you're still a little hacked off about it and they're wrong and the whole world's out to get you, try it. Step back a second and ask yourself questions. I wonder why this happened. I wonder why they said what they said. God, help me understand what was happening, what was being done. Why was it being done? Is it me just being a little prideful and arrogant? What was happening? I want to understand. And to understand, I've got to listen. God, I'm listening to you. What is it that you want me to say? If you've never practiced it, it's the weirdest thing in the world. But just sit and listen. God, what do you want to say to me? Please bring to light what it is that I am not understanding and getting in this. You want to get really dangerous? You want to live on the edge? You want to have some fun this week? Invite the person you have misunderstandings with into the conversation. Not to tell them you're right or, you're wrong, or, or how they're wrong and you're right, but to just listen. Help me please understand. Your veins will pop. You'll get all clenched in the teeth. You'll be ready to start putting a hundred blows in and you'll do all these things. But if you could just step back, help me understand. Help me understand what happened. And then try it before. You, if you know you have a conversation this week, I'm going to go into a difficult conversation. I got something going on with somebody and I'm already going into it angry. Step back before you go in and listen. God, what is, it, what is going on in me that I'm bringing so much anger that I'm projecting on this person? What is it going on and happening in me or in my past or what's happening? Maybe you need to sit with a cool spirit, a man of understanding, and you're like that coach coaching four-year-olds last week that I'd like to pull aside and say, hey, tell me about your dad. Let's have an ice cream cone and settle down a little bit because you're a bit of an animal here right now to these four-year-old children. Pull back talk to somebody and say, help me understand because I don't want to take what I've got built up and go into this meeting right now. Try it. Practice it. That's your homework assignment. Here's the last question for the, for the day. Because I know some of us will be thinking this, but what if I can't reach an understanding? What if I just absolutely cannot understand? You don't know what's happened to me and I hear what you're saying, but you do not understand what's happened to me. What if I cannot reach an understanding? What if it's just impossible because they have hurt me so bad and there is no way in this world I could listen to a person who's done all this that they've done to me and expect to get anything back in return that would help? I would say that if you begin the practices of understanding, you might begin a process towards healing, 
which is forgiveness, which is sometimes forgiveness. Well, forgiveness always is about you, not them. I mean, we're not doing forgiveness today, but it is always more about you than them. But here's what I would say too. If you're paying attention, if you're listening, I believe that there is a really beautiful pattern that is developing out of the, our study in Proverbs. If you cannot reach an understanding, I would say go back to the pattern we are developing out of Proverbs, which is two weeks ago, Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So start with respect for God and respect for his word. Spend time listening to God. Spend time in respect and awe and reverence for God and his word and listening to God. What we talked about last week from Proverbs chapter 3, let love and faithfulness never leave you. If you are struggling with a big area of misunderstanding and you cannot reach an understanding with a person, start with fear and reverence for God. Start with number two, love and faithfulness will never leave leave me. So that means I will never treat anyone horribly. I will never speak badly towards somebody. I will never speak badly about somebody. Love and faithfulness will never leave me. You can treat me as bad as you want. You can say whatever you want to say to me. You can do whatever you want to do to me. And I won't walk out of the room and thinking, oh, this is just horrible out to get me because I know respect and reverence for God and rooted in his word is stories about my savior, Jesus Christ, who did all of that for me. And so love and faithfulness will never leave me because my Savior on that cross looked out at all of those people, now still with compassion, and he uttered the words, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And so I will go back to the pattern, respect and reverence and awe for God, love and faithfulness will never leave me. And the last part of this pattern that, we begin, that we're developing is I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart and I will lean not on my own understanding but in all my ways I will acknowledge him if you are at a place of absolute misunderstanding go back to the pattern God is first and foremost in my life love and faithfulness will never leave me because he is filling me with his love and his faithfulness to me and when I can't go any further I am clinging to the cross of Jesus Christ and I am trusting in God with all of my heart and I am leaning not on my own understanding but I am acknowledging him in all of my ways what would our world look like if every Christian took that approach if <laughs> Yeah, what would this world look like? And then adding today's sermon, the last, so what do you do? Respect and trust, or respect and awe and reverence for God and his word. Never let love and faithfulness leave you. Trust in God and his plan and acknowledge him with every single thing we do and say. And then adding today, I would just continually pray and cry out for understanding. Help me understand, God, what has gone on and passionately pursue it and pray for it. And never forget the example of our Savior on the cross, who in his characteristic of understanding looked at his people, God's creation, who were beating him and mocking him and abusing him and nailing him to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Isn't that the most extreme, powerful example of a person who passionately pursued understanding and he offered us compassion, forgiveness, transformation, and health in our relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are sitting here today and you have not made that connection with Christ, do it. Talk to somebody. Explore the relationship. Find somebody who has a cool spirit, a person of understanding, and just be honest. I don't get it. I'm not there. Help me. If you're here today and you know God's been just tugging on your heart, people here, myself, would pray with you. Be glad to. Today, now, 
If you want to come forward during this last song, band, why don't you come forward? If you want to come forward during this last song as we, as we pray and we praise the God who is mighty to save, as we, as we lift up the name of Christ, if you want to come and pray today, uh, general rule of thumb that we just kind of have worked out here, if you'd like to come forward today and you want somebody to pray with you, this is your side. If you want to come forward and you want to pray and you don't want anybody bugging you, this is your side. If you come here, we're all confused. I don't know what you're doing, so just, but wherever God leads you. Um, and if you don't want to come forward and pray, I'm going to tell you, there's, I don't see anywhere in, in the Gospels where Jesus said, with every head bowed, every eye closed, please come forward to the altar, to which Peter would have said, where, what altar? There's nothing in this that has to happen that way, but if it's you and you want to come forward, I invite you. And if it's you and you want to talk to somebody today and you want to pray, there are a lot of cool spirits around this room. Let's pray. Let's stand together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your understanding of us and your invitation to us continually. Through your love and your faithfulness to us, we come before you today, Father, standing before you and thanking you for all that you do for us. Father, I pray that you move and you lead and guide in each of our individual lives, wherever that is. And I pray a blessing over this congregation, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, and I pray today, Father, that we all, every one of us, would become and are growing in our relationships with Christ to such an extent that we would be people who have a cool spirit to speak into the deep waters of the lives of the people that you bring to us. In your name we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is mighty to save, we pray. And all God's people say, amen.